Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in because in this video, it's time to take a close look at the 3DO Panasonic, the FZ10. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just getting into this new rabbit hole called Panasonic 3DO. As a child, personally, I have no connection whatsoever with this, because back in the day I was just playing on my Sega Genesis and also my Nintendo products. But I can tell you, I did miss out when it comes to this product. Growing up and making videos here on YouTube, it's so much fun, simply because we have so many new opportunities when it comes to retro game collecting. But some of the products will come with a hefty price tag. And when it comes to the FZ10, I think it's still affordable. I'm always being very careful when it comes to the word affordable. I know like some people will think like affordable is $50 or something, but of course when it comes to niches like this or new rabbit holes, it can be become very expensive, especially when you're going to look into some certain games. I bought this particular model from a fellow collector, Mr. Port, here in my country. Simply because I didn't want to, let's say, do all of the mumbo jumbo of like basically buy it from eBay, because this is one of the places you can get these things. The consideration, depending on the overall as a quality, and also if you're going to get one without box, it's going to be way cheaper. It's all like depending how you want to have it, what kind of configuration, but also another thing you need to take consideration when it comes to these products. The system itself has been provided by a Pico upgrade. This means that we can just use a 12 volt power supply and it is so much more convenient than using external, let's say, converters. Can you still remember like the memory units for the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2 and your Panasonic had the same thing? You will connect this with your Panasonic. What I understand of this thing is just like universal. You can use it for every single one you're getting. If it's a Gold Star, it's on you or just the FZ1 or the FZ10. You're just going to have like a memory card. Yeah, absolutely crazy expensive nowadays. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with these things. So if you want to have like a memory card for your Panasonic 3 d you need to buy them from like eBay or something like that. And you're just going to plug it into the back with the FZ10. But beside all of the mumbo jumbo and the memory card, the FZ10 was more like an affordable way to play back in the day. Cheaper to buy for the people, to get people basically like buying a 3DO. And I must say the FZ10 was also like a very compact model and also came with a top loader. Something we have seen with the PlayStation 1 for example. But if you're looking at the specifications of this device, it was absolutely the same when it comes to the specs. So there wasn't like an improved disk drive. They're still using the two-speed disk drive that we have in every single model I'm showing you here on the channel. And the FZ10 was like one of those different ways to play. And when you're going to look at the FZ10 now, it also is going to be a little bit less cheaper to buy. Of course, depending when you're going to see this video and searching for the games and everything that you're going to need. Because when it comes to 3DO, it's not like the most cheapest system out there. But the FZ10, I personally really like it. The top loading, like mechanism and everything, how it looks and how it plays. But let's do a quick teardown and let's just take a close look in the inside of the Panasonic FZ10. I love it when it comes to retro systems. These things are super easy to tear down. We just need to remove like a couple of screws and we can just lift up the top cover. So if you just want to like mess around with it, like when it comes to certain things, for example, when you're looking at the power supply over here, this is like a completely different construction. I really love it. Like the wheels console modification. He made a completely new PCB where you can see over here that also just plug into the original system. The only thing you're getting is that we're going to have like an output plug that we need to maybe like implement but this is something I personally didn't uh, like put on here. This is basically the Pico PCU version 1 that Mr. Port installed for me. Okay, over here we have like the PCB that also implements the laser unit. And yeah, replacing these things, it's inevitable. In the future, the lasers will die off. So replacing would be like an option. Another thing is like, oh, there's still a little bit of dust in here. But the caps, seems to be like every single cap is also in very good condition. Take double check if it didn't leak or did they like having like some weird things going on over here. So that is also something you need to check. After removing the parkers, we need to get this tape off. I'm using my screwdriver because I don't have any nails at the moment. I just cut my nails because I had a case of dirty, filthy fingernails. Oh man, come on! But let's remove the EO shielding and let's take a close look what is underneath. It isn't for cooling whatsoever. Okay, so I was quite surprised to see there is some modification done by the manufacturer, it seems to be. At first I thought it was 
a mod chip or something but no it's a mod they did by the manufacturer itself it's quite interesting to see i just asked like one guy from the discord channel for 3 do because i had no idea whatsoever but just wanted to double check everything check out if the manufacturers did any other modification and how are the caps because that is something you always need to double check with these order systems for example my fz1 i didn't review yet as making this recording uh, yeah that is one of those main board that i asked him to make a completely recap simply because i just want to have this thing for many many years to come and again like it's a quite interesting thing with finding it in the inside the fz10 was just an attempt of making these things cheaper and giving like a different market the opportunity to get yourself like a 3do but something i don't need to forget removing or replacing is this battery so this battery is going to be an issue like with the sega dreamcast i know there are like different let's say replacement kits so you can just plug it in and out so that's something i will need to do in the future and at the side of the system, we're also going to get ourselves a special serial port where we can attach new add-ons. The upgrade that we're going to get is the VCD upgrade. So basically, Video CD was more like something between, let's say, the VHS tapes and DVD. And we have like all kinds of upgrades when it comes to like the 3DO. From like gigantic ones or another one that looks a little bit similar to the Sega CD2, if you know like what I mean with that. And also like a tiny one you can slap into your gold star. But also with the FZ... 10 we do have like one and it looks so much better you know like it indeed like gives me like an upgrade and it looks so much more better and sleek for my opinion when it comes to the vcd i personally prefer to have the sz10 with the vcd because in the end it looks way better and also we have a top loader so it's so much easier to slap in your games like open it up pop them in and let's go but okay so then we have like the oda ultimate upgrade the optical drive emulator the one I'm holding here is the export made by Fixel. So far I understand this is the only company having an external ODA solution. What I really like about it that we do have a like solution now that you can plug into your machine. The consideration this version you're seeing is more like a concept or a first edition release. If you're going to buy one now it's going to be looking completely different. And I mean like especially when you're looking at the external version. But also the same company makes an eternal one you can just plug into your dive if you don't want to have like the disk drive or you have a broken laser you can replace it by an ODA. But this is of course like a super cool solution and take consideration it's not going to be a cheap solution. I think this is the most expensive thing you can buy an export ODA external it's absolutely like the only way to play and of course I already mentioned you can still play original games I think that is pretty cool. Another interesting thing were the controllers. Yep, we have like different kind of controllers because we're having different kind of systems. So what we're going to get are basically five licensed or original controllers. The Capcom one is, yeah, it's an original one license. But yeah, when you're looking into the aftermarket, there we're going to get like a gazillion different ones with six buttons. But just want to focus on these five. So when you're buying a particular system, you're going to get yourself like a unique controller. We're having like a bigger and more like a slim version. And also, of course, the Senyu and also the Gold Star have their own controller. And the Street Fighter one you can nowadays pick up. They are like super expensive. But again, like that's what it is with like say super cool collectible items like the 3DO. And some particular like products are just expensive to get in the end. One of those crazy expensive things that you can get is this special limited edition fight controller pad for the 3 oh Man, this thing is absolutely awesome. I really love to play with this thing. And this is the ultimate way to play the Street Fighter 2 on the 3 do <laughs> But let's take a close look at the original Panasonic controller. We have more like the Juke controller like with the Xbox Classic because we have two kind of versions. And I can tell you like it's more like a personal thing. I really like both of them. So this is the first version that we're going to get. It's like from the original FZ1. And this particular control also have even a headphone jack out at the bottom. So that's kind of interesting even like volume control. So I think it's a really damn cool feature. If you look at it like back in the day then of course we're having like the slim version and the slim version was slimmed down was for better for let's say people with smaller hands and didn't have the headphone jack function anymore do get like this mega drive one to two vibe that they remove something i really personally hate it yeah but this is way smaller than the first edition personally i love like juke xbox controls and the same also implemented for the panasonic so with the gold star but also with the Zen U, we're going to get ourselves like 
different controllers or the sand hero is a more like a little bit different story let's talk about the gold star first because the gold star i can tell you this thing plays absolutely crap like i don't like the controller it, it no no not at all like it's, it's way too bulky or the form factor is not that comfortable like the original pad also the d-pad itself it's nope absolutely you know nope 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 we do have like a headphone jack out that's kind of cool the Senyu controller yeah so i was looking at it and i was thinking hey this is quite familiar and when you're looking at it it plays absolutely and holds very comfortable in the hand way better than the gold star because that d-pad of the gold star is absolutely rubbish but I was looking at it and Mr. Port said to me like, hey, did you know like the Senyu is basically the same like the original Panasonic controller? I was more like, wait, what? So basically what they did, they had like the same mold. So that is the thing they did like basically like cloned from the other one or used from the other one. It's indeed exactly the same kind of controller. But I'm going to make a dedicated video about this Capcom controller. Also doing, doing a quick teardown, just wanted to see how they made this. Like some people will hate it, I really love it, I think it's super comfortable and just like the ultimate way to play Street Fighter 2 on the 3DO. But again, it's going to be like an expensive way to play because this is an absolutely like crazy expensive thing. I bought it myself from Japan because I am just a big fan of Street Fighter. I just need to have this controller. But let's also take a close look at the way how you need to connect your controller because that is a quite interesting method. I cannot really recall if there are anything like else on a product like having this. Because to having only one single port and yup it's like the similar like plug like the mega drive but this controller uses the daisy link chain connection and it means like if you want to connect a second controller you need to connect it in the first one the capcom controller has like a separate box in the cable i personally really love this way just basically plug in the cable like that and the daisy link is ready plug this plug in the system and it will be recognized perfectly but how is it with the overall game quality and the games you can buy for it? There is a lot of junk on this device. But I just picked it up for a couple of good, great titles. I'm just a big Street Fighter fan. And for me, like, this was absolutely the single reason why I want to have the 3DO. The game, the soundtracks, I also made like a separate video about this. It's going to be epic. We have games like Road Rash. Of course, you have like ported this to different systems like PlayStation. This is not like a game you should like buy in 3DO for, but it's a great add-on. Then we have games like Mega Race. I've played it. I really couldn't get into it, but nevertheless, it's a very fun game with motion videos. Later on, we'll talk about it more. Return Fire. I also play this to death when it comes to the freaking PlayStation 1. This is absolutely one of those hidden gems. If you have a 3DO, thank you. About it you should get one of these games absolutely great and we have like a different kind of games you just picked up star wars rebel assault and yep they look great and they're like fun games to play but the library it's not huge when it comes to good titles in my opinion but they're like a cool hidden game gem collection on there that you should pick up if you're thinking about getting a 3do so when you're looking at the speed of the disk drives, they're not like the super fastest speed that drives out there. But when you're looking at the Sega CD, that was like absolutely horrendous when it comes to the loan time. I think the 3DO does a great job when it comes to this. So let's start off with some Street Fighter with my favorite controller. This is basically one of the ways I just love to play. Yeah, on the LCD is maybe not the ultimate retro way, but for now we're just doing a quick match and just see actually how it plays. And the best feature of the game is just the freaking gameplay. It's almost arcade perfect. And that audio, listen to it. But one of the first things I noticed when playing on my 3DO that we're actually going to get, like, not long alone, big loading times. Oh man, seriously, what is recording T Hawk? I really always get my ass whooped by that guy. But okay, let's give it a try. See, we do have like a couple of seconds that we need to wait. I think it's not really annoying, but also between sessions. Oh, I need to get you to this. Nope, you're not going to do that. Oh. And of course, Street Fighter, one of my favorite games to play. But this is more like a Mortal Kombat ripoff, The Way of the Warrior. Welcome to Noble Challenger, prepare to find the way. Round one. 
and I personally have the idea that this 3DO version is way better. Nevertheless, it's a very fun game to play. You can play it alone or with friends. Basically, what you need to do is go to your opponent's building, destroy it, and then go in to grab yourself like a Humvee and just grab the flag. That's the only thing that you need to do, but it's quite challenging and a lot of fun. But of course we also have like some old school classics like Need for Speed on the 3DO and very cool game. I understand there's even like a modded version when it comes to the game that you have like a better like faster speed experience. <laughs> If you don't have a good quality control when it comes to the games, you're going to get games like Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. Should you get yourself a 3DO in this year? Yeah, that's a question only you can decide. It depends how big of a fan you are of from certain games. I just want to have a 3DO forever. Of course you can just emulate these things nowadays. But again, for me, like for the re-retro feeling, I just wanted to have an original one. And for me, like I already mentioned in this video, Street Fighter was basically absolutely one of the reasons I just want to have a 3DO. I think the SZ10 is an absolutely great solution if you just want to have like a couple of games and just want to play and enjoy. Yeah, the converter, I personally really love it. You can just plug it into your wall, don't have like a lot of hustle. Nevertheless, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of the Street Fighter game and other ones, or what's your favorite game for 3DO. And it will be great to see you in the next video.